Cervical cancer is the second most commonest cancer in the women of our country. Till 2018, it happened to be the most common cancer. The number of cases have started to decline because of better screening and some preventive measures, which I will talk about in the later part of the talk. So cervical cancer, first of all, I would want to explain what it is because many people confuse cervical spondylosis with cervical cancer, which is quite unfortunate. So cervical cancer is cancer of the mouth of the cervix. Cervix is the outermost part of the uterus from where the baby comes out and it enters into the vaginal canal. So the tumors or the cancers which develop from cervix are called cervical cancers. Cervical cancers are majorly caused by certain viruses. So it is a virus induced disease. The viruses, they infect the cervix and over the years, the cervix becomes a pre-malignant and then it turns into a malignancy. So it is something which is viral induced and it takes many years. It may take from 8 to 15 years to develop into a cancer. There are around 8 to 10 different types of viruses. We call them human papilloma viruses, the different strains of which cause cervical cancer. Of these multiple strains, there are four of them which are the most fulminant ones. They are causing more aggressive tumors and they have a higher propensity of causing cancer. Apart from viruses, the local hygiene, immune suppression, multiple sexual partners, having multiple children, having sexual intercourse at an earlier age are known risk factors for cervical cancer. There is also a type of cervical cancer which is a clear cell type of cervical cancer which tends to happen in those women whose mother have consumed a drug called diethylsilvestrol when the girl was in her womb. So this is a very specific type of cancer although its incidence is decreasing now because now this drug is not consumed during pregnancy. After understanding these uh, risk factors, we need to understand how would a woman know that the symptoms which she is having might be cervical cancer. So the commonest symptom, the first and the foremost symptom which a woman can encounter is post-coital bleeding, that is having bleeding after any sexual contact. The other symptoms can be irregularity in menstrual cycles, having bleeding in between menstrual cycles, having heavier menstrual cycles, and as disease progresses, may be accompanied with discharge from vagina which may be foul smelling and further on as it progresses one can have symptoms pertaining to difficulty in urination, difficulty in passing stool. As disease further on progresses some women can complain of lower backache going into the back of their thigh as well. Once tumor comes out of the cervix and goes to the other parts of the body then the symptoms of loss of appetite decreased uh, uh, weight, uh, decrease in the weight and even bony pains can happen in certain women. So it is the timely picking up of these symptoms that can actually ensure that a woman can be cured. So what next? What is the next step which one should take if these symptoms are existing in you? So you should meet a gynecologist so that she can do a gynecological evaluation, see from her own eyes that what is the cause of this bleeding. Because many a times there may be certain other causes of bleeding like uh, thyroid disorders, it can be certain bleeding disorders caused by fibroids. So do not self-diagnose, the gynecologist will evaluate and see. So if a gynecologist finds that there is a growth over the cervix, the next step which would be undertaken will be conduct of a biopsy. So biopsy would include taking a small tissue from the growth which is seen under the microscope to confirm that it is a tumour. Once the biopsy has confirmed that it is a cancer, the next step is to conduct some radiological test to find the stage of disease and to define treatment. So the test which will be done in cervical cancer uh, diagnosis would be MRI of the abdominal pelvis. If disease is found to be advanced, then sometimes a PET CT scan may also be conducted. After seeing the findings on the MRI, one tries to establish whether this lady will be a candidate for surgery or not. So based on the MRI findings, we stage the tumor into stage 1, 2, 3, 4. Stage 1 is majorly when the disease is just confined to the cervix. Stage 2 when it comes out of the cervix and is just going to the adjoining areas. Stage 3 is when it is going to certain lymph nodes, parametria. Stage 4 when it has advanced to the other parts of the body. 
so treatment wise stage 1 and even up to stage 2 a tumors become eligible for surgery because surgery remains mainstay of treatment where the entire tumor and some adjacent areas are removed and later on based on what we find in the surgical specimen sometimes some women may be offered additional radiation to ensure that the tumor does not come back rest all patients beyond stage 2 that is stage 2b onwards all patients are treated with radiation therapy radiation again would be delivered in two formats the first part of radiation would include giving some radiation from outside the body which is called external beam radiation therapy it will be undertaken for around 5 weeks it will be done daily monday to friday monday to friday would be 5 days in a week along with that some mild chemotherapy will also be given which is given for the purpose of radiation sensitization that is the radiation will work better in the women who are given this chemotherapy once this schedule of 5 weeks of radiation is completed the doctor will again examine to see how much the tumor has shrunken based on the level of shrinkage the next step of radiation is done which is called internal radiation or brachytherapy so if the tumor has shrunk very drastically and one can enter the uterus through a small tube a simple process called intracavitary radiation is done if the uterine tube cannot be inserted inside and there is still some tumor remaining then a process called interstitial brachytherapy is performed on completion of brachytherapy the entire treatment is complete and then there is something called surveillance the patient is called every 3 to 4 months for the coming 2 years to ensure that disease is still under control so that is the format how treatment of cervical cancer is done but here i take the opportunity to tell you how to prevent and to get yourself screened because the stage of tumor at which you will come to us will depend whether you are getting screening done or not so as i told you that the viruses cause cervical cancer but before they cause cancer they cause something called a precancerous situation so there is a test called pap smear where we collect few uh, cells from the cervix area which are done in the opd basis a small brush or a spatula is introduced through the vagina few fluids are collected and they are put onto a slide these are seen and on those slides we can see whether the cells are showing certain changes which we can label as cin 1 2 3 or a cancer so if there is just a cin then it is not a cancer we can just treat with some laser cryo or very simple modality so that it does not transform into cancer whereas if there is cancer then as i told you the treatment is done as per the stage of the disease there is a very very effective vaccine also available towards these human papilloma virus so the right age group of getting this vaccine is 9 to 14 years that is the younger girls who are lesser than 15 years of age it would entail two dosages and depending upon the brand the schedule is slightly different but those girls who are more than 15 years of age they would require three dosages and the women who are married can still go for the vaccine up to the age of 45 years though the efficacy of the vaccination is better in a child so if you have young children at home do get in touch with the pediatrician or the gynecologist so that the child can be vaccinated well in time because it gives protection not only against cervical cancer but there is also protection against oral pharyngeal cancers anal cancers and genital warts because these are again induced by this particular virus so it is high time get aware get knowledge about this vaccine because these vaccine preventable diseases if we are getting them cured well in time our scenario of cancer development will definitely change in the country thank you so much